This part, I'll let you read on your own, but this is actually what they gave me when I was being trained on you guys when I'm eight. Um, it's basically telling the teacher, it's not really made for you guys, it's telling the teacher what pitfalls or what problems students usually have. So you can like read through this on your own and see if you're having those problems so you can just aware of. Important environmental legislation. You have I've given you this before, but you should know most of these. Um, especially like the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, things like that. Remember the Clean Air Act of 1970 is really important because that's the one where they let out of gasoline and they stopped using CFCs to put ozone in the airspace. So mm -hmm. that one, you know, really helped build. Air pollution. Okay, so you should know those. Example data set, we're not going to do this, I'm showing you. So in this case, I'm giving you uh, a graph, and you got to answer question based on the graph. But it might be a page or something like that. Notice, and this is where they're going to trip you up. Notice, this is actually, the second part is here. So the first part says, we're applying the following question based on the data. Calculate this, calculate that, use that, do this. But that's A. That's only one part. That's only one, one fifth, because this one has five parts. That's only one fifth of the question. They're, they want you to waste your time on the calculation. And then B goes into a very easy answer to the question. Describe one environmental advantage and one environmental disadvantage. Describe one economic advantage and one economic disadvantage. That's easy. And the rest of you can answer easily, but they want you to waste your time on the hard part, or the part most people take more time on, calculation. So realize these are, you know, sub parts of A. So this is where A is worth the same amount as B, as C, as D, as E. So these little things are worth like not even half a point. So if you're running out of time, just skip A. You want to be C, D, and then go back to the document. This example of document is question. You see these all the time. We have a little clip thing. It's not a huge document, it's like three, four paragraphs. And this is where they ask you the first thing is, is reading comprehension. They ask you something that you find in the question. The second part, they want you to put something you already know with what they gave you in the, in the reading. And then the third and fourth part are the BS parts. That's where you come up with your own conclusions. Um, they have questions. So people in what part of the world would be most likely to be affected by the link between El Nino and disease? Well, that's your opinion. It's your opinion where you think the people are going to be you know, most affected. Clearly describe two other important environmental problems associated with enzymes. Well, we got a big bunch of lists of problems, you know, you just come up with what you think the best answer is. So there's no right or wrong for this. Example synthesis of evaluation. This is like your regular paper question. You can have one data set, one diagram based on two synthesis. Then there's 115 weeks to eight. Talked about that already. I'm going to go over this again on the, on the last one. This part, this part isn't very long, but I think it's the most important overall concept topic that they test on the APM, and that's global warming versus ozone verification. So now 
what I gave you on the top of the outline. But if you look at your topic outline, we're going over, today we're doing global change, which is the last section, the seventh section of the seven sections. So it's the last section, which is kind of getting more sense of all of this stuff. Um, global warming versus ozone hole depletion. So that's the thing that they want and most students get tripped up on most of the time. And a lot of times they think they understand it. But they don't. And I can try to stress it a lot in the class. Alright, so these are the two most tested and most important kinds of two that most understand and engage. Only about 50% of the age students actually understand the difference. They are just the physics and the age and the So, as far as the age test and your understanding of global warming and ozone depletion, they are not related. So, down here it says there's a small part that's related, but unless you understand the difference between the two, don't consider the two. Whereas they are separate, and most people think that they are the same And the only link there is, <coughs> where it is, but it's not that important, is that CFCs are global or greenhouse gas. But other than that one little point, it's a little bit separate. Right? Okay. Let's see. Alright, global warming, a simple explanation. So here's a picture, we need it. Sun's rays come in, makes it warm. And the greenhouse gases keep the rays, or they keep it in you know, our atmosphere instead of going back in outer space. That's why we have an atmosphere, that's why the temperature stays about the same because of global warming and the greenhouse effect. So greenhouse gases are actually good. We need them to have our atmosphere. If we don't have them, then all the heat from the sun will escape and we wouldn't be able to live. Alright, so global warming. Global warming is a result of the greenhouse effect. So the greenhouse effect is the scientific explanation for global warming. The greenhouse effect is the phenomenon whereby the Earth's atmosphere traps solar radiation caused by the presence in the atmosphere of gases such as carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane to allow incoming sunlight to pass through that absorb heat radiated back to the Earth's surface. So the picture before it, we saw the most of the heat was coming close to the Earth. The greenhouse effect is usually is used to explain global warming and the effects of global warming. Okay, this is something important, and this is something that most AP environmental teachers and most environmental teachers in general don't stress, and that is the, the concept, the idea of global warming, isn't a theory. Because remember, a theory means it's pretty much a law. Fact and ignore the question. Um, it's actually a hypothesis. So they're still testing it. They don't know if it's really actually true yet. They are pretty sure it's true, but there's still reasonable why can be debated, and there's still people who think that the uh, greenhouse effect isn't going to be global. So it's a hypothesis. 
which is still being tested. It has not yet attained the status of a theory uh, because it's not accepted by everyone. Think of politics and the scientific definition of the theory. So, think of the politicians. And, uh, greenhouse effect is the best explanation we have for global warming this point. So, why is it driving? It's because of greenhouse gas. We think and there's a lot of data saying that it's the reason, but it's not fact. And you get a lot of um, environmentalists and the really tree hugger types that want you to think that that is the definite end of discussion reason. But it's not. You don't really know 